And they'll be so quiet and absolutely, yeah. Come on, I hope not. Come up and have a seat. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And it's so good to have you all here. It's 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 wonderful to see you. Yes. I have a gift for you. Oh, for me? Yes, sir, for you. You worked so hard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you worked so hard, you're well deserving of a gift. Thank you. Oh. Have you ever received a gift? Did you ever say thank you for it? Yeah, that's good. Alpha time. Let me let me uh, I had a whole story for you. But I gotta find out what's in my gift, don't you think? It's a stick. It's a log. Yeah. Oh, is there something on the back? Oh. Ah! Looky there. You know, sometimes when we just get something, there's just a log or it's, have you ever gotten a gift? Well, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but it's so nice. Can you see in this? What does it look like inside? Woo! Isn't that pretty? Oh, man. I know, I will do that. And oh, it says they were some friends too. Yes. Can you see that? Now can everybody look? Oh, can you, you, can you see inside that? What is missing over here? Can anybody look here and see who that's missing? Anybody? Jesus, yes. Do you know what these guys are doing? Yeah, they're giving gifts. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten a gift? Have you ever gotten a gift? How many have ever gotten a gift? Raise your hand. How many of you said, yay! Can you say that? Yeah! That's a way of saying thank you, isn't it? Now, listen real close. Listen, watch it, watch it. You're going to have to watch because it's going to be so important, I can't tell you. There's somebody that's going to give you a gift and you're going to get a gift and the gift itself. Now think about that. Someone who gives the gifts, someone who gets the gift, and the gift itself. Can you all say that? Shh. I'm going to get down on my knee. Shh. Can you say that real close? Someone who gives the gift. Can you think of people who give gifts? Who? Yeah, Santa does. Mama does. Daddy does. Friends do. Can you think of who gets the gift? Me. Me. Absolutely. And the gift inside is what is so important. Now, I'm going to give you a stamp for five candles. Come on up here. Can you imagine what that's for? Oh, are you okay, buddy? Oh, so, yes. And there's five candles. And here we have five candles how many candles in Advent? Here we go. I'm going to give you, oh, you need another one? Okay, absolutely. Y'all just wait a minute. We'll be there in a minute. Yes, okay, here we go. Oh, you want one there? Okay, well, that's what I would think too. Is there a word you might say? Thank you. Good. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Here's a, yeah. can you say a word? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, good. Yeah. What's a good word? Thank you. You're welcome. What's a good word? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Okay, bud. What's a good word? Thank you. All right. Did y'all get that? I think there's a... Sometimes we forget the aspects of giving. 
And you know, I can still remember Mama Roy. I knew what I was going to get on Christmas morning. First and foremost, it'd be a pair of blue jeans. Uh, isn't that the most thrilling thing you've ever imagined in your life? And a pair of Argyle socks. Well, when I got older, you know, because that was cool. But I always took the gift, and then on occasion, that some of the buddies and us would get together and say, what'd you get? Well, I got a shirt. Well, what'd you get? Well, I got some jeans. Well, I got some shoes. But there's a sense in which all of us at this time have the opportunity to get gifts. On first look, what does that look like? Just an old log. What is good? But hidden underneath it is somebody that has done a remarkable piece and let me tell you, what I, what I discovered when I did this earlier at service is the closer you are to the gift, the easier you can see what's there. The, how does it look from back there? See, it's harder to see the further away we get from the gift. And we're celebrating a gift. And so sometimes we might be invited to come closer. I got this, and it was a wonderful gift. But when I first opened it, and this really did happen, when it first opened, that's all I saw. And, I, and it, underneath it, it says, from Al and Mary, uh, year 2000, okay? Well, they were friends that gave me this gift. Well, they knew what we liked. I think one of the things that, uh, I, I read an article, and I, I'm going to follow this pretty good, because the older, the older you get, the more you need something to follow, or you'll go off in all kinds of tangents. Uh, I read this article in, in a travel magazine. It said, I saw that if I looked at something long enough, this is important, I'd see more than a first glance delivers. You know, we live in a time of first glances, don't we? have 875 friends on Facebook. We've got to glance through every one of them, right? We're glance. We don't see we live in a culture of glancing, and we don't see. This is the time to maybe stop and look again to see if we see something more than we've seen before. I think one of the real things that when things become familiar with us, especially some of you guys, uh, you guys that are old, older, you know, we can sometimes we have a habit of saying, "Well, I've seen it all." That's not true, is it? But yet there's something in us that wants to say, I've been there, done that. I've seen it all. Well, sometimes one of the beauties of Christmas is that we get to come back to it again and see if we see something anew. I think that one of the, oh, I, I, would you all do me this favor? I'm going to sing a couple of old lines of something that you probably know, and then I'm going to play like I'm a choir director. And when I do this, y'all come in to the, next, the following line. Y'all understand? And you got to watch me because it's important that you don't come in too soon. You wait till I say. Okay. Are you ready? Now don't you dare start singing until I tell you to. <laughs> Silent night. Holy night. All is See, it's wonderful when people watch. There will always be somebody, all is bright. No, I said, I cut it off, you see. Now let's try that again. Okay, silent night, holy night. See, one of the beauties of this word, all is calm. How many of us feel calm right now? How many feel calm a lot? See, I think one of the things that we oftentimes forget as we come into Christmas is that it is a time to somewhere in our soul to be calm. And it's difficult to be calm at all times, but yet somewhere I think God is saying, all is calm. Just to be quiet. Are there angels today? Huh? 
one of the things about the Scriptures today with Mary, she heard an angel talk to her. If she was alive today, she probably wouldn't tell anybody, right? But somewhere in the process, she listened and she heard an angel say, Mary, you're going to have a baby. Now, this gal was probably maybe 13 or 14 years old, okay, at the time. There's a good chance she was that young. And so all of a sudden, she, oh, come on. How can this be? And the angel said, Mary, you're going to have a baby. And so forth. So, Now, we're all smart. We're all educated. How many of y'all believe that? Don't raise your hand. That's a nice story, isn't it? And yet we often forget that maybe on occasion there might be something in the Bible that's true. That all of a sudden an angel of the Lord came to Mary and said that. But you know what? A few months earlier, the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah. How many of y'all know that? In fact, you may have heard it today. He said, your wife Elizabeth is going to have a baby. His name is John. And then all of a sudden, Mary, when she heard the angel say, she ran up to this hill country place. I thought that was in Texas. But anyway, she went up to the hill country. And lo and behold, when she walked in, now listen real close to make sure you really believe this. She ran up to Elizabeth and said, before she could say anything, Elizabeth said, my baby leaped for joy in my tummy. Now, how many really buy that? I don't have any experience of kicking kids and babies. There may be some that do, but yet somewhere along the line, this happened when the baby John heard about or had the presence of knowing they were with Jesus. It somehow said, I'm in the presence of my Lord. And the angel of the Lord came upon them. And all of a sudden, really, now this is so important. I love the way we did this. I was, I was well, I've got to tell you this story. And I can't think of the thing. It's a revel, a revel, styles, revel, styles, revel, some place like that down on Bridge Street, okay? I, I was, my wife and I were out walking, and she said, let's go in. And so, you know, why not, you know? So, I mean, there was no place to sit down, number one. It was just clothes and women's stuff. And all of a sudden... Jay, it was really neat. And so I just took my position over here next to the door. And Jane went about, well, all of a sudden she bought something. You know, and uh, she brought it home. We paid for it with a credit card. Now listen real close. We paid for it, but a week went by and so help me, the card did not clear. Or, uh, I said, so I called up Revel or Revel or I stopped, whatever that is. And I said, my credit card has not shown up as being paid. Can you check that out? He said, well, I'll have my boss call you. Well, a couple of days later, the, wife, the boss called and said, I'm supposed to talk to you about a credit card. And I said, you know what? It just cleared this morning. And she said, oh, good. And then I said, hey, wait a minute. Now, I don't know why I did this. I usually not. If I'm in a hurry, I don't do this. But I said, let me tell you something. When we went into your store, I loved the culture there. The people were friendly. I loved how everything was out. It was just nice. You should be congratulated. And I heard this little sniff over the line. And she said, all I've had this morning were complaints and gripes about the store, and you made my day. Now, what great event is that, huh? And yet, for some reason, and then I got back into the car right after I talked with her, and I turned on the... And did you know there's a singing group that's called Alabama? Well, I turned it on and so helped me. It was playing and it was, but it just wasn't any old song. It says, oh, I believe there are angels among us. And went on to say, sent down to us from somewhere up above. And that's just an old country song, so it's not worthwhile, right? <laughs> it's not of the status of a bach. But it goes on. They come to tell you and me 
in our darkest hour to show you how to live and how to love, to guide us. So all of a sudden, I had the phone call and I had the, t uh, the radio on in Alabama, and here I am in Alabama, and all of a sudden, it dawned on me, or the thought came to me, am I, was I an angel for that person at that time? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. And see, all of us have stories like that, but we, when we become so sophisticated, we forget that, you know, God's presence is so much around us all the time that we are too busy to just be still enough to see Him or to hear Him. Today is a story of grateful receiving and of unashamed gratitude for it. Now I'm going to tell a story. You, you tell me, which is more important, to breathe in or to breathe out? We're not going to take a vote on that, are we? <laughs> yeah. Why is that so? Because if you stop doing one of them, it is not a good ending. What is good? Is it better to be left or right? Have you ever seen American Eagle flapping with only one wing? Yeah. See, there's a great sense. Oh, I know another one. Tis more blessed to... Then receive. What if all of our lives we've heard? That's, there's a truth. There is a blessing in giving, isn't there? But what if all of a sudden we give and we give and all we hear is about giving and we somehow forget the reality, especially come Christmas time? We have to receive also. We receive gifts from one another. We receive gifts people who come into our life. We receive. In fact, there's a sense in which the whole essence of Christmas is to be able and be open enough to receive a baby so that somewhere in our midst we can grow into something outstanding in terms of love, in terms of gifts. So to give and to give and to give, we may forget the real giver. And Concentrate only on see what I've done. See, all, so this Christmas time is a great time to back off and hear that maybe, well, I know, the, I know another one. Is it better to be big or to be small? Big. Yeah, big would be good. <laughs> so all of a sudden we have, how about a big church or a small church? Huh? You know, I've been, I've been in a lot of small little churches and boy, the love of God is there. They hate each other, they love each other, but they're all together. I've seen big churches. Which, are, which is best? Tis more blessed to give to more. Which is the best? Sometimes I just want to emphasize today that it is oftentimes in small things that we overlook, that we've somehow figured out that we already know what it ought to be like, that we're unafraid, that we can no longer receive anything. Oh, I know. Here's another. Are y'all familiar with Charlotte? Charlotte Christian High School? What? Charlotte Christian High School, they had a really good high school team, basketball team. And they went on and they played a lot of the bigger schools and they, for some reason, started winning. And all of a sudden, there was this one kid on, the, on that uh, team it was just absolutely remarkable. And a lot of colleges thought of, you know, but the University of Kentucky, yeah, he doesn't pass the eye test. Have you ever seen, heard that before? UConn came down and they saw him play. Oh, he doesn't pass the eye test. He's too frail. He's too small. He, he doesn't shoot correctly. He doesn't do anything right. So there was one final little school. You ever heard of this one? Oh, this is great. Davidson Liberal Arts College. 1,800 students. And one of them was Steph Curry, who accidentally over time became beyond what anybody could imagine. Well, all of us have that kind of possibility. We're more than we can imagine. 
But if we've already decided, I know how much is enough, and we forget God's greatest gift as He comes to us. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephraim, did y'all catch that when that was read? But oh, you, O Bethlehem, you who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth. Who? Jesus. Now, like the kids, there's one who gives, one who receives, and what's in the middle? The gift. One who gives, one who receives, and the gift. We'll all have communion in a minute, and there will be someone who gives, and there will be someone what? You see? And what will be given? The gift. See, when we go too fast, we forget, whoa, I'm in the midst of something that's overwhelming. A gift that's been given and received. But sometimes when we receive it, we don't say what? Thank you. That's why I love Mama Roy. I didn't necessarily like my blue jeans, but I wore them the rest of the year. So all of a sudden we're called into this kind of relationship with God at this time of the year. It's to be receivers. Concentrate on receiving those gifts. Receiving what's been given to us. Receiving, dare I say, Jesus. And as the colic kind of intimated, Purify our conscience so that we, when Jesus comes, he can find a what? A mansion to dwell in. So Mary had it all right, didn't she? My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Here's a little bit, nobody. But her soul was expanded to receive God. That's what it means to magnify our souls that they can become more open to receive what God has to offer. And I'll leave you with this one. It's a classic spiritual. I'm just going, everybody, take a breath right now. Take a breath. Now, how many of you breathed in first? That's just the way we do it in the West. We want to take first and wait later. Did you know it's been kind of proven that people over time, when they start all their breathing exercises and and when they breathe in first, they don't breathe in very much. Now I want you to do this. Okay? And I'm, I'm gonna t- I'll tell you when. Just breathe out. When we start our exercise, I want you to breathe out. And then when you can, and you just keep pushing. And then when you can't breathe out anymore, then just fill up your lungs. That's like my soul. Okay, ready? Breathe out. And when you can no longer... And then when it, then, you see it's that breathing in that we receive the gifts, but they can't get there if we haven't emptied ourselves. When we breathe in, guess what happens? We have more than enough to give. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.